1950, the year started and ended with a song from Nashville, number one on the pop charts. Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy by Red Foley and Tennessee Waltz by Patty Page. Tennessee Waltz stayed number one, I think something like 13 weeks. And that opened up Nashville as a song town. Elvis sold so many records that they built this studio and put, put a headquarters for Nashville here. It evolved in a, in a variety of ways. It wasn't just one way, but it was a variety of forces that came together to make Nashville. One of, one of the keys to Nashville becoming a recording center was the uh, Musicians Union. That played a key role. But here you had a core of, of musicians who could record in Nashville and made it very convenient. And a lot of other cities pretty much outlawed that. My name is Mike Slusser. It's S-L-U-S-S-E-R. Uh, I'm originally from the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area. I moved to Nashville in 1998. And uh, I picked up the uh, street moniker uh, Mandolin Mike because I play the mandolin every day. I'm one of the few guys that does that. Uh, playing on a company mandolin is a little bit different than playing guitar. And uh, so that kind of stands out. and It's my signature thing, if you will. Um, for the last six years, I've been paying my own rent, feeding myself, uh, taking care of all my strings and necessities. Um, normally, I have CDs for sale. I, I replenish my CDs from the money that I make out here. I have no backers, uh, no government check or, or, or subsidies, uh, no food stamps, none of that stuff. So it proves that if you're willing to tighten your belt and accept you know, whatever comes your way and make do with it, you can make a living. Uh, so I've been doing it for six years with no other, uh, no, no safety net. So it is possible. <laughs> Well, the Fisk Jubilee Singers started uh, when Fisk University, which was really kind of a, a junior high and high school for, uh, for former slaves, uh, was out of, running out of money and they needed uh, uh, some money. So a man named George White, who is the, who is the uh, uh, director of the Fisk, uh, uh, music director at Fisk, uh, took a group of singers on the road and um, uh, they began uh, performing spirituals. The story of the Jubilee Singers really hinges on him and his own initiative. He had organized a choir of students who sang traditional music like areas and things of that sort. Uh, and like most school teachers, he happened to stumble upon the class, um, kind of having their personal exchanges before the formal classroom exercise, and he heard them singing uh, music that he thought was hauntingly beautiful, but yet very strange to him. It was foreign to him. Um, those songs were the songs of the black slave experience, the songs that have come to be known as the spirituals. Um, he had a very difficult time trying to encourage the students to share these songs with him, with him because they were considered sacred and personal and a part of the experience of slavery um, and quite uh, quite connected to the slave experience, one, but on a much, much deeper and personal level. It was kind of um, a part of the legacy that their parents had left to them. And they weren't quite sure about the ways in which it would be used or the ways in which it would be interpreted. And so they wanted to be very careful with whom they shared it. And at his urging, they realized the power of the songs, they realized the appeal of the songs. And he was the one that actually organized them as a group and took them on tour in 1871 in order to save the school. Working on all the analog gear uh, before and working on all the newer digital gear is, is a lot smaller than what it used to be. And when it comes to all these uh, new pieces of gear 
that uh, you know that you can use as far as the uh, uh, the new plugins that are coming out. There's a lot of really nice plugins that are coming out that mimic a lot of analog gear that you used to have to buy and whatnot. You know, the music industry is not going to die by any means. Um, you know, it's just these bigger companies that were dominating the music industry before. They're not going to be able to do that anymore. Um, so you're going to see more home studios. You're going to see more elaborate studios, I'd say, in homes than you ever used to see before. Um, but I think the music industry is going to adapt. You know, those companies are going to adapt. They're going to figure out ways to do it. I like, I like sell CDs. I can buy CDs. I don't want to take them download them and all that jazz. We now have generations of people uh, who consider uh, music for free as an entitlement uh, because we didn't adapt. You know, of course, it's, it may not be the greatest thing for these big companies that had all this control before and now they're realizing that they're kind of losing that. It might not be good for them, but for the music industry as a whole, for the area, for the, all of the you know, thousands and millions of people that are involved in the music industry, it can't be a bad thing for them. I think Nashville, you know, the thing about Nashville, there's a market for almost everything here. People who aren't really from here, a lot of them think, oh, it's, you know, the country capital of the world, but I'm really finding that um, it's a lot broader than that, and uh, I think it, it definitely benefits a newer kind of band like us. Probably most dramatic has been uh, the, the, the inception of, of digital music because it changed the model. It, it, it broke the model uh, and is now transforming the model uh, as we speak. The genres of music that are here are, I think they're going to still get a little bit more diverse. It's not going to be, I think Nashville kind of embraces the whole country music kind of scene and you know you go downtown you see all the honky tonks up and down Broadway. They embrace that, they do, but I, I don't think that uh, necessarily accurately represents what the industry is like here because you know you got bands that are you got hardcore bands you got hip-hop um, you got country music you got a, a pretty decent jazz scene all coming through here there's a lot of stuff going on here um, it's just the city kind of embraces that uh, country thing. I think it's it's changing what's happening in the business uh, it, it's a business that used to be major labels dominating the entire uh, landscape and that's not the case anymore now you have the option uh, to do many things yourself. We've had more success in the last few years uh, outside the genre of country than, than ever in the history of the town. Uh, and it's not an accident. The, the best musicians are here. The best producers are here. The best songwriters by far are here. Uh, so, uh, and, and the great, greatest executive talent that you could be needing and wanting all in one place is here as well. This is really the center of the music business today and moving forward.